Toa are a fictional species of cyborg warriors and the primary protagonists of the Lego toy series Bionicle. Constructible Lego sets depicting Toa were marketed as the main toys of the franchise and released regularly throughout its tenure. In the theme's original story Generation 1, the Toa are heroic beings, usually depicted in teams of six, whose duty is to protect their villager counterparts, the Matoran, from danger and maintain peace throughout their universe. Certain Matoran are destined to become Toa after their dormant Toa power is activated. Once they have completed their destiny, a Toa can choose to sacrifice their power and transform into Taraga, elders who typically governs Matoran. Each Toa represents an element and has the ability to create, manipulate and absorb it, for which they normally use a set of a tools to channel. Each also wear a Kanohi, a mask that grants them specific powers. In the theme's rebooted story Generation 2, the premise is similar. The Toa are six-element-powered heroes who are summoned to the island of Okoto to save the inhabitants from the schemes of Makuta and his minions. Each Toa wears a great mask of power that amplifies their elemental energy and carry tools to channel it. Topic: <laughs> Production. The first Bionicle sets created and released were six Toa characters, later known as the Toa Mata. The warrior-like appearance of the toys was believed to be too restricting by some Lego company traditionalists because it went against Lego's values of high-quality products that have an emphasis on free play and encouraging the imagination, and not modern warfare or violence. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Fictional history. Toa have been around for most of the Bionicle universe's existence, devised by the great beings to serve as heroes for the Matoran, and fulfill dangerous tasks that would ensure the workers could continue to fulfill their duties. These tasks could range from rescuing Matoran from Rahi attacks, to engaging in war to defend territories and prevent enslavement, and in some cases ensure the survival of the great spirit Mata Nui. The first Toa to come into existence was Helrix, a Toa of water. She assisted with the construction of Metru Nui. Shortly before Mata Nui was brought to life, the Toa Mata were created, trained and placed in hibernation inside Kata Nui, ready to awaken the Great Spirit should he ever fall into a coma. After Mata Nui became active, destined Matoran were transformed into Toa through the use of Toa stones. This was the process by which most Toa came into being, with the Toa Mata and Helrix soon becoming exceptions rather than the standard. Over time, the number of Toa grew greatly, with some giving up their powers to become Taraga, allowing other Matoran to take their place. Most joined teams and fought against Dark Hunters and Rahi. Death in such conflicts was a regular occurrence. Those who served with distinction were chosen as bodyguards for the Brotherhood of Makuta, taking the name Toa Haga. When the team assigned to Makuta Teridax discovered his plan to depose Mata Nui and began a rebellion, they were mutated by his lieutenants and became outcasts, while the other teams were swiftly eliminated or corrupted. Following the Great Cataclysm in which the Brotherhood's evil became common knowledge, Toa became fugitives, and their numbers reduced drastically, with some elements like iron and magnetism suffering particularly heavy persecution due to the danger they posed to Makuta. Toa are bound to adhere to the Toa Code, a set of ethics not fully detailed in the story. The most important aspect of this code is not to commit murder, killing is only permitted in self-defense or the defense of an innocent's life. While Toa are almost always heroes, some do not adhere to the code, Helrix does not due to being created before the existence of the code, Lesovic does not consider himself worthy of the title of Toa, and there are traitors who simply ignore it. Throughout the disastrous takeover by Makuta Teridax, the main antagonist of the Bionicle saga, the Toa continued to operate, albeit in hiding. After Teridax's defeat at the hands of Mata Nui, the Toa migrated to the newly reformed Spheris Magna along with all the other Matoran universe residents, who could now speak the Agri language. There were once as many as 3,000 Toa in existence, but after many centuries of war, murder and Toa power sacrifice, their numbers diminished to near as 40. <laughs> <laughs> Main Toa teams <laughs> Toa Mata, Toa Nuva The chosen guardians of the great spirit Mata Nui, destined to awaken him if he would ever fall. They were known as the Toa Mata, six Toa warriors. In Matoran, Toa Mata literally means spirit heroes or heroes of the spirit. Their eventual summoning failed to deliver them to the island of Mata Nui immediately, and left them drifting in the ocean for a millennium. 
When they finally arrived on the island, they had forgotten all but their names, and had to be informed of their quest by the Taraga. Despite regular disagreement about their next course of action, they learned to work together to achieve their duty, and were able to end the Rahi threat to the Matoran by defeating Makuta temporarily, and later fought the Borok and Rakshi with the same success. After their transformation in energized protodermis, they became the Toa Nuva, with increased strength and improved armor, weaponry, and masks. They then added the suffix, Nuva, meaning, new, to their name and masks. Their new powers did not come without risk, their command of the elements was tied to artifacts known as Nuva symbols. They learned this when the Borok Kal targeted and stole the symbols, which made their powers desert them. The Toa Nuva would later hide these symbols at locations known only to themselves to prevent such a disaster occurring again. After donning Ataka's adaptive armor, they were able to master any environment with its ability to adapt to the current situation. After being teleported to Kata Nui, Tahu, Gali, and Onua dispatched themselves to the Swamp of Secrets, while Lua, Kopaka and Pohatu remained in the skies and stalactite villages to rescue the local AV Matoran. After using legendary keystones to power the Kodrex Dome, energy storms raged throughout Kata Nui, killing every Makuta there save those who had already fallen in battle. The storms confirmed that they succeeded in their ultimate quest to awaken Mata Nui, unaware that Makuta Teridax had taken over his body. They would lead a resistance movement against their archenemy during the months of his reign. After Spherus Magna's reformation, Tahu's transformation, and Mata Nui's last wish to find the great beings, the team has currently split up to fulfill different missions. In their time on Kata Nui, Tahu's team was known as the Mystica, in the Matoran language translating to "...spirits of the mist", with their armor adapting to a swamp environment with aerial capabilities armed with Ninra ghost blasters. Kopaka's team also received a Matoran term. Spirits of the Sky, or Fantoka, armed with Midak Sky Blasters. In the 2015 reboot, new versions of the Toa Mata appear, mostly retaining their respective elements, only the air element has changed, being replaced with jungle. After awakening Ekimu and helping reclaim his Mask of Creation, the Mask Maker forges new armor for the Toa, which gives them the ability to unify with elemental creatures. With aid from Ekimu, they battle Umarak the Hunter, a minion of Makutas, who steals the Mask of Control and is transformed into a horrifying beast upon putting it on. Stealing the pieces of the Mask of Ultimate Power, he attempts to bring Makuta back from the Shadow Realm and into the main reality. Ultimately, the Toa fulfill their destiny and manage to re-imprison Makuta before returning to the stars from whence they came. Tahu. <laughs> The Toa of Fire and the leader of the Toa, Tahu initially demanded fierce loyalty to his command, discarding others' own opinions and ignoring them altogether, plunging them into dangerous tasks. Although the team acknowledged him as a leader, they did not respect him. His aggression after arriving on Mata Nui was easily brought to the surface, causing him to almost drive himself to madness with the burdens of his amnesia. He eventually managed to control his anger, gaining the respect of his comrades, even the Toa of Ice, Kopaka, whom he constantly clashed with. Toa Mata Tahu's weapons included a Kanohi Hau, the Mask of Shielding, which could protect him from oncoming attacks, but not ambushes. He also carried a fire sword to channel his fire element. Like his fellow Toa Mata, he collected five other Kanohi and went to Kini Nui for a golden Kanohi, containing the powers of the Kanohi Hau, Akaku X-ray vision, Kaukau underwater breathing, Miru levitation, Kakama speed, and Pakari strength. Tahu's appearance in this form is dominantly red with orange legs and arms. Toa Nuva Tahu's weapons included a Kanohi Hau Nuva, the Nuva Mask of Shielding, which allowed him to protect not just himself, but others around him. His fire sword transformed into two magma swords, which served to channel his fire element or be put together to make a lava board. He collected five Kanohi Nuva to store at Tarsuva, but were lost when Tarkoro sank after a Rakshi attack. Tahu's Nuva appearance slightly unchanged from his Toa Mata form, but bared silver shoulder and chest armor. Once he gained adaptive armor, his armor shifted in the Swamp of Secrets, gaining a Ninra Ghost Blaster, and rotating blades which could also serve as a shield. He also carried a Ninra Ghost Blaster, which fired energy which could be manipulated mentally. After arriving on Bara Magna, he was devolved into a crude version of his Toa Mata self by the Ignika in order to wield the Golden Armor, as the armor was designed to be wielded by his Mata form, not his Nuva form. As such, his adaptive weapon has taken the form of his old Fire Sword. Soon after, he was clad in golden armor and destroyed all the Krata controlling the Rakshi, which interrupted Makuta Teridax's concentration and gave Mata Nui his only chance to defeat the tyrant. 
After Martin Nui's victory, he helped lead the inhabitants of the reform Sferis Magna, the original paradise. Having assumed the powers of all the Krata the armor destroyed, he is now the most powerful Toa in existence. In the 2015 rebooted series, Tahu is characterized with a forgetful nature, an undying sense of luck, and a drive to be the best of his team, but he retains his original temper. Lua The Toa of Air, Lua is often eager to face his Toa responsibilities with carelessness, considering the entire ordeal of a fight as an adventure. Cheery and lighthearted, he has no bounds. He naturally speaks in the tree speak dialect native to Lakoro, and prefers dense jungle areas as his home. After briefly being controlled by both Makuta Teridax after his mask was infected by an infected Rahi, then rescued by Onua and a Borok Krana, he learned not to take his urgent role so lightly, his will renewed to never again underestimate threats. After Teridax took over the universe, Lua was transported to Trenchrome's island, who switched bodies with him in order to save their universe. Though their spirits were switched back by Arthika, he was recently expelled into space along with everyone else in the core processor. He is currently on Bota Magna thanks to a dimension hopping Vezin. Lua is armed with the Kanohi Miru, Mask of Levitation, which allows him to glide or hover in the air, the Nuva version allowing him to share this ability with others. As a Toa Mata, he was armed with an axe, later transformed into a pair of air katana, which when put under his arms could also help him glide or soar in conjunction with his Kanohi. As a Fantoka, he is armed with an air saber, and a midak skyblaster. Later on the journey of Kata Nui, he discovers the Axelara T9, and pilots it against Makuta Antros in the Jetrax T6, though this vehicle was later teleported back to Kata Nui following Mata Nui's reawakening. In the 2015 rebooted series, Lua's element is now, "...jungle", instead of, "...air". He is portrayed as a rebellious, cunning, and sarcastic Toa, whose carelessness and out-of-the-box thinking can lead to trouble with his teammates, but can also help to solve situations. As a uniter, he is depicted similarly, but his speech is often ungrammatical. Gali The Toa of Water, Gali is calm and extraordinarily wise. Seeking to contain Tahu's aggression and protect the unity of the Toa, she takes her role as a Toa with the utmost importance, and is willing to protect any sentient being threatened by the evils of the Brotherhood of Makuta. Considering her peaceful lifestyle, she is an accomplished warrior against those who threaten her allies, like the amphibious Rahi that dwell near Garkoro. Her concern for Tahu greatens in the 2003, "'Mask of Light' storyline, where she saves him from dying after being poisoned by the Rakshi, after which the two came to mutually respect one another. Gali is armed with the Kanohi Kaukau, Mask of Underwater Breathing, which allows her to breathe underwater for a limited time. The Nuva version of this mask allows her to share this ability with others, as well as last longer underwater. As a Toa Mata, she was armed with hooks, which were later transformed into aqua axes, which doubled as fins to help her swim faster underwater. She additionally had propellers as a Nuva. As a Mystica, she is armed with a Ninra Ghost Blaster with laser sighting. In the 2015 rebooted series, Gali's personality is similar to the original series, willing to bring help to the less fortunate with her strong sense of justice. She can be kind, mellow, and somewhat prone to jokes that rarely deliver, but also aggressive if the situation calls for it. During the final battle against Makuta, Gali was briefly trapped in the Shadow Realm, where she learned of what would happen to herself and her teammates once Makuta was defeated. Kopaka The Toa of Ice and Team Deputy, Kopaka's modus operandi is to work alone, often despising the Matoran's virtue of unity, but his analytical side persuaded him to go against his will after realizing it was the only way to fight Teridax. His aloof nature constantly brought him into conflict with Tahu, though the two eventually came to respect one another. He has also learned to respect the ideals of unity. Despite Kopaka's prior issues with teamwork and unity, he always protected the innocent with the same devotion of his fellow Toa, especially the inhabitants of Kokoro, his home region. He was the first to actually defeat a group of Rakshi warriors in open combat, protecting Jala and Takua from being attacked on an ice lake in their journey with the Mask of Light. He did this by shooting Panrak, Gwerik, and Larak into a frigid lake with an ice spike, then flash freezing all three under the water. Kopaka is armed with the Kanohi Akaku, Mask of X ray vision, which allows him to see through objects. The Nuva version lets him share this power with others. 
As a Toa Mata, he was armed with an ice sword, which was later transformed into a double ended ice blade, and an ice shield. The ice blade also had the added benefit of splitting in half to provide Kopaka with a pair of power skis, allowing him to slide down the slopes surrounding Kokoro with immense speed and agility. As a Fantoka, he is armed with a midak skyblaster equipped with a protosteel blizzard blade attached with an aiming laser. He also piloted the Jetrax T6, which was briefly stolen by Makuta Antros. In the 2015 rebooted series, Kopaka carries an ice spear and a frost shield, the latter weapon being able to split apart into a pair of skis. He retains much of his original personality, primarily his cold demeanor, with the added elements of a strict code of conduct, clumsiness, a poor sense of direction, and perfectionism. Pohatu The Toa of Stone, Pohatu is regarded as one of the friendliest Toa. With Gali, he continues to hold the peace between the Toa, but unlike her, is ready to do so in a friendlier way that benefits all of his friends. The only thing he feared was water, on account of the fact he couldn't swim and was too heavy to float. He also once rescued Takua from a Nui Jagger that was spreading the Makuta's infection to the Po Matoran's Kolhi balls. Pohatu is armed with the Kanohi Kakama, Mask of Speed, which lets him move at incredible speeds. The Nuva version lets him share this power with others. As a Toa Mata, he is armed with feet additions, durable enough to smash through a boulder, later transformed into an even stronger form, and he gained dual climbing claws which he could put together to make a Koden ball for sport. As a Fantoka, he is armed with a Midak Skyblaster along with twin propellers which double as drills. During his journeys in Kata Nui, he discovers the Rocco T3, and pilots it against Antros in the Jetrax T6. In the 2015 rebooted series, he carries a dagger and a pair of stormerangs, which can double as jets once attached to his feet. He is now depicted with a brave, resolute, and stubborn personality, but dislikes the Dark and Scorpions. After gaining his Uniter armor, he refused to work with his elemental creature, Keta, because he was a scorpion. However, he ultimately learned to work with him and even came to respect him. Onua The Toa of Earth, Onua is very quiet, speaking only when he has something important to add, making him very well respected among his comrades. He is intelligent, wise, and strong. He also has excellent night vision but can't see well in bright light. A running gag in the series has Onua saving people at the last moment, including catching Tahu as he was dropped from the sky and Lua when he was given an infected mask by the Makuta and later infected by a Borok Krana this has been somewhat carried on in the 2015 reboot, in which he saves the other Toa from a deadly arena and moves Pohatu out of the way of incoming rocks. Onua wears the Kanohi Pakari, Mask of Strength, which increases his already impressive strength. The Nuva version of the mask lets him share this extra strength with others. As a Toa Mata, his weapons were his hands, which sported large claws. When he became a Toa Nuva, he received dual quake breakers which he could put on his feet to travel over rough ground, and as a Mystica, he is armed with a Ninra Ghost Blaster and a multi-resistant shield. In the 2015 rebooted series, Onua carries an earthquake hammer, which can split into a pair of turbo shovelers. His personality remains very much the same as his old one, with the addition of using caves as a place to think and sleep. Toa Haga, Rahaga The history of the Toa Haga dates back to prior the coming of the Toa Mata during the early stages of Makuta Teridax's plan. The guardians of Makuta Teridax, the Toa team was made of six Toa chosen specifically in reward of their previous deeds. Given an elite status and unique armor that identified them as Haga, or guardians in the Matoran language, and thus were named the Toa Haga, the Toa Haga served Teridax on Destral, deceived and manipulated to destroy the rampant artificial Borok the Brotherhood created, which were initially considered by the Brotherhood as a potential weapon, unknown to the elitist faction. Eventually, this deception did not last long, and they rebelled against Teridax and the Brotherhood when they discovered that they had committed theft and stolen the Kanohi Avaki. When four of their number were captured by the Brotherhood, Norik and Aruini rescued their comrades, but were mutated by Rudaka into Toa Haga Rakshi mutants named Rahaga. Although they escaped with their lives, they had been given a fate worse than death, and could never be accepted into Matoran society as true heroes. The Rahaga, accepting their fate, educated themselves about Rahi to save them from the onslaught of the Vizarak Legion. They also searched for the mythical Ketongu, which possessed the ability to cure those infected with Hordika venom, to aid in their task. 
The quest eventually took them to Metru Nui, ruined by the Great Cataclysm and overrun by the Visorak. They chose to hide the Mask of Light in Metru Nui, creating a seal that could only be opened with the fragments of the Makoki stone they had broken and hidden across the city. Arriving to rescue the Toa Metru, sent to their deaths, they inform them of their mutation by Hordika Venom into Toa Hordika, educating them in their new forms and the possibility of a cure in Kitongu. There, they helped the Toa Hordika in defeating the Visorak and evacuating the Matoran from the city. They were later transformed back into the Toa Haga by Rudaka when she was coerced by the Toa Nuva. On behalf of the Order of Mata Nui, they searched for Teridax under the Colosseum, but were trapped in an illusion where they only saw the happiness and peace of a world freed from Teridax's reign. They were later snapped out of the illusion by Trenkrom in Lua's body, and fought in the resistance against Teridax. As of the original series cancellation, they were preparing to go to the aid of the Toa Mari, who had been brainwashed by a monstrous enemy. Norik Norik is the Toa Haga of Fire, and the leader of the Toa Haga, and was previously the Rahaga of Fire. In the discovery of the Brotherhood's Rebellion, he allowed his team to become overconfident against their foes, paving the way for their capture. He, along with Aruini, was the only one to escape the fate of his teammates, and teamed up with him to rescue them. Now changed to a Taraga Esquire's persona, he became cautious, but still preferred to lead with actions instead of words. He was also very concerned about Varkama's rapid primal transformation, and was the only one to escape capture once more when Varkama joined Rudaka. As a Rahaga, Norik was armed with a Rotuka spinner with the snare power, which tangled the limbs of a target. His Rahaga staff could also be manipulated to distract his reptile Rahi prey Norik specialized in the capture and study of these Rahi such as Furnace Salamanders as he prepared to strike. As a Toa Haga, he is armed with the Haga's standard weapons, a lava spear which contained the power of lava and could sap or increase the heat of its target, and a Rotuka launching shield with Rotuka containing slow opponent power which weakened and slowed its target. He wears the Kanohi Pekui, Great Mask of Diminishment, although it was in the shape of a standard noble Kirill and not of a standard Great Pekui. It was presented to him by enslaved Matoran working under threats from the Brotherhood of Makuta and is shaped like a noble Kirill to honor a past hero. Garaki Garaki is the Toa Haga, and formerly Rahaga, of water. As a Toa of water, Garaki can create, control, and absorb water. This also gives her the ability to control water, create storms, and cause floods. These abilities were lost when she was turned into a Rahaga, but she has since regained her powers. Her Rotuka spinner as a Rahaga was used to capture Rahi by flowing through the depths of water, attaching itself to the target, and floating them up towards the surface. As a Rahaga, she was feisty and always wanted to prove herself as good a Rahaga as the rest. She was also a translator, and her area of expertise was the capture of water Rahi. She always wanted to show the other Rahaga that she was a great expert in the capture of Rahi. She was visibly affected by her mask, as she often felt that the power was using her rather than the other way round. Bomonga Bomonga is the Toa Haga of Earth. As a Rahaga, Bomonga was known to hunt in absolute silence and preferred to work alone. His prey were the Rahi hiders", insect and nocturnal species. Bomonga searched for Rahi under cover of darkness and was known to burrow into the earth to wait for the creatures to come near. From a place of concealment, he would launch silent spinners to incapacitate his targets. Extremely patient and skilled, he would wait for hours to catch one Rahi. As a Toa of Earth, Bomonga can create, control, and absorb Earth. This also gives him the ability to control Earth, and create earthquakes. He frequently used his mask of growth in battle, being proficient enough to bring down a Tartarak, a Rahi far stronger than he. These abilities were lost when he was turned into a Rahaga, but he has since regained his powers. Kualis Kualis is the Toa Haga of ice. He can create, control, and absorb ice, giving him the ability to create snowstorms, to travel via ice bridges and more. As a Rahaga, he learned how to speak the language of flying Rahi, passing this knowledge on to Nuju. He could also play his staff like a flute. Pooks the Toa Hagger of Stone. He is known to be loud and boisterous and believes in plain speaking and taking direct action rather than sneaking around. 
He truly loves massive beasts and can teach others how to befriend them. As a Rahaga, he used a lasso spinner to capture the beasts and used his staff to leave an invisible mark so he could track them. He has since been turned back into a Toa. Pooks along with the other Toa Haga defeated the Kanohi dragon on Chia. Aruini The Toa Haga of Air. As a Toa, he believed that the team needed to spend more time on more routine dangers, such as Rahi invasions. The rest of the team did not share this view, and the differences of opinion lead to him quitting the team. This meant he was not present when his comrades were captured, so he was able to join forces with Norik again to save them. Upon becoming a Rahaga, Aruini quickly resigned himself to the mutation, and did not accept that Kitongu had the power to cure him. However, he was overjoyed to become a Toa again, adopting an adventurous attitude. Topic: Toa Inika, Toa Mari. The Toa Inika, Toa Mari were once six Matoran from the island of Mata Nui that journeyed to Voya Nui to save the Toa Nuva, who had disappeared on the island while searching for the Mask of Life. These Matoran were Jala, Hali, Kongu, Matoro, Huki, and Nuparu. Having braved the nightmare realm of Karzani on their journey to the island, they were immediately transformed by a bolt of lightning from the Red Star when they came ashore. The unusual nature of their transformation meant they had electricity interlaced with their elemental powers, their faces glowed bizarrely, and their kanohi were organic. As Toa Inika, they battled the Toa Nuva's captors, the evil Paraka, for control over the Mask of Life, while also searching for the Toa Nuva. They teamed up with the Voya Nui resistance team, led by Garin and consisting of Balta, Dalu, Kazi, Pirik, and Velika, as well as won the Mask's guardians, Order of Mata Nui operative Axon. They eventually battled against Vezin and Fenrak, Carters, and Kongu used his Mask of Telepathy to read the Mask's mind, learning that the Mask wanted Matoro as its new guardian. After Jala froze Vezin and Carters, Matoro took the Mask off of Vezin. To his own surprise, it came off right when he touched it, but before long the Mask flew into the sea. Axon opened a secret tunnel so the Toa Inika could go down into the pit and find the Mask, while on the surface, the Toa Nuva were rescued by the Voya Nui resistance team. Upon emerging out into the dark water of Pit, a blast of energy from the Mask of Life transformed them again, changing their Kanohi and removing their lightning powers. They were branded as allies of the Baraki by the Mari Nui Matoran, and most were captured by the Baraki themselves while Matoro was imprisoned by Hydraxon, but later freed by Teridax, who had taken control over a Maxilos robot. The Toa Mari later escaped with the help of a Hana crab and stole some Kordak blasters from the Baraki. They were named the protectors of Mari Nui by Defilak, the city's leader. They battled the Baraki and Hydraxon, who was working against both sides, for the Mask of Life, but temporarily abandoned this objective when they learned that they had destroyed the cord connecting Voya Nui to Mari Nui for Mata Nui to live. With Axon's help, they evacuated the Matoran of Mari Nui and Voya Nui into the tunnels above the cord, where they would be safe from the destruction that would follow. Having saved the Matoran from another attack by the Paraka, they returned to the pit destroyed the cord and wrested the Mask of Life from their enemies. As Mari Nui was wiped out by the falling island, the Mari rushed to the hole where the island would fall, only for the Mask of Life to go dark, as the great spirit Mata Nui finally died. Matoro, however refused to give up, and his allies agreed to stand and fight against the approaching armies of the Baraki to buy Matoro time to revive Mata Nui. Matoro reached the hole just before Voya Nui fell back into place, and fell through a torrent of water to Kata Nui, the core of the Matoran universe while the others held off the Baraki. As Jala prepared to unleash a Nova Blast in last-ditch effort to obliterate the Baraki, Matoro gave his life to don the Ignika and save Mata Nui's life, and sent his fellow Toa back to Metru Nui. After Jala powered down his energy, they learned of Matoro's fate from Taraga Varkama. They became the protectors of Metru Nui in the absence of the Toa Nuva they had left Voya Nui to fulfill their own destiny of awakening Mata Nui, now possible thanks to Matoro's sacrifice. During Teridax's reign the Toa Mari were chosen to perform an espionage mission on the island Zakaz, home of the Skakadi, who created a powerful gold skin fusion. The Mari were hypnotized by the creature and relished following the fusion's command. On Spheris Magna, Kopaka learned of this, and Garaki gathered her team to rescue the Mari. The fusion's hold over the team was disrupted when a being called Inona attacked the Skakadi, freeing them from its control. Topic: <laughs> Jala. Jala has a strong sense of justice and responsibility, and is known for his immense courage. 
He is willing to do whatever it takes to do his duty. As leader of a Toa team, Jala tries to be a more cautious leader of Toa compared to other Toa of fire such as Tahu or Vakama. He tries hard to heed the opinions of his teammates as well, but nevertheless experienced annoyance when Matoro began taking charge of the team in the pit, though the two eventually resolved their differences. As a Matoran, Jala was captain of the TA Koro and later Tarmetru guard, and played defense for the TA Koro Kolhi team. He was best friends with Takua, who later became Toa Takanova, and their friendship continues even as Toa. When Jala was a Matoran and Takua accidentally melted the totem turning into the Mask of Light, Jala also carried a backpack for carrying Kanohi masks like the one they discovered. He originally wore a powerless Komau mask of mind control before it broke inside a Matoran sphere. Taraga Vakama replaced it with a noble how originally worn by Taraga Lakan. As a Toa Inika, Jala wore the Kanohi Kalix, the Mask of Fate, which allows him to perform at his physical peak, pulling off feats others would deem impossible. He carried two energized flame swords and a multi-shot Zamor sphere launcher. As a Toa Mari, he wears the Kanohi Arthrone, which gives him echolocation. He carries a power sword and a Kordak blaster as his main tools. During his time in Mari Nui, Jala mounted his blaster on the back of a Hana crab, which remained in the pit after Jala was teleported back to Metru Nui. Halley As a Matoran on Mata Nui, Halley spent most of her time tending to her many village chores like fish catching and net mending, without ambition to travel or go on adventures. Her shyness kept her from speaking up, despite being full of ideas, and her fellow Gar Matoran would often forget or overlook her. Nevertheless, Nokama could see true potential in her, selecting her to play for Gar Koro in the Kolhi tournament. She wore a Kao Kao as her Kanohi mask. She also came to share an affectionate friendship with Jala following the Borok crisis. When she became a Toa, Halley was initially nervous about her new role, and the power she possessed. She eventually warmed up to it, however, and became more confident to the point of choosing to go on solo missions without fear. She soon became her team's strongest member during the underwater Mari quest. As a Toa Inika, she wore the Kanohi Elder, Mask of Detection, which allowed her to sense the presence of other beings and the Mask of Life. She carried a laser harpoon and a multi-shot Zamor sphere launcher. As a Toa Mari, she wears the Kanohi Faxon, Mask of Kindred, which allows her to copy the abilities of other Rahi that shares her current environment. She carries a set of protosteel talons and a Kordak blaster. She also gained a pair of fins on her back to help her swim faster. Kyuki <laughs> Kyuki is known for his athletic ability on both Metru Nui and Mata Nui, winning many copper masks as a Matoran. These talents helped develop his combat skills and reflexes. He also possessed keen senses, allowing him to pinpoint weak spots. He wore a Kakama as his Kanohi mask. When he became a Toa Inika, he was initially uncomfortable with his new role, desiring to find the Ignika quickly so that he could return to his old friends and his old life. However, he eventually grew accustomed to being a Toa. An athlete by nature, he also disliked the advantage afforded to him by his mask of power, and did not use it in combat unless necessary. As a Toa Inika, he wore the Kanohi Sanic, Mask of Accuracy, which, as the title suggests, increased his accuracy in hitting a target. He carried a laser axe with a climbing chain attached to it and a multi-shot Zamor sphere launcher. As a Toa Mari, he wears the Kanohi Garai, Mask of Gravity, which increases or decreases the gravity of a target. He carried a Kordak blaster mounted on his wrist, an aqua warblade, and a pair of electrifying chains. One of the chains was broken during the underwater Mari quest, but was later repaired. <laughs> Nuparu Nuparu is a master engineer, and feels at ease when surrounded by machinery he can tinker with, continuing this passion even as a Toa. He also has a great passion for learning, enjoying being a Toa, as it meant the ability and opportunity to explore new places and study new things, like Rahi. While in Mari Nui, he continued his duties, but was upset that he was in the middle of a crisis, meaning he couldn't take the time to learn all there is to learn. As a Matoran, he wore a Pakari as his Kanohi mask and was known for creating the Boxor robots to help repel the Borok. As a Toa Inika, he wore the Kanohi Kaden, Mask of Flight, which allowed him to fly, an ironic twist for a Toa of Earth. He carried a laser drill and a multi-shot Zamor sphere launcher mounted on his right shoulder. His hands became a pair of sharp claws for digging. 
As a Toa Mari, he wears the Kanohi Volatak, mask of stealth, which allows him to become completely silent and mostly transparent. He carries a Kordak blaster, a razor edge protosteel shield, and an aqua blaster blade, the latter of which was not featured in the set. Kongu While a Matoran, Kongu was known to be very serious during times of danger, being the military leader of the Gukko force. Over time, however, Lua was known to influence Kongu, teaching him to be more laid back and gain enjoyment out of his missions. Once becoming a Toa, Kongu began following that advice, and is now generally fun-loving and full of wit, having a joke or comment ready at the right time. Kongu gets along well with his fellow Toa, especially with Nuparu. The Toa of Air at first complained that Nuparu, being a Toa of Earth, shouldn't have received the Kaden, Mask of Flight. But he later cheerfully offered to help his friend learn to fly, saying that Nuparu might break the Mask of Flight as an excuse to help him. As a Toa Inika, Kongu suffered an unusual problem with his own mask, he could not turn the Kanohi Suletu off, and was thus constantly forced to listen to the thoughts of his teammates, something that was naturally very distracting. His problems with Kanohi continued as a Toa Mari when the Kanohi Zarth was bestowed upon him, as he had no control over the Rahi once he had summoned them, and the undersea monsters that he did call to his aid invariably made the situation worse. As a Toa Inika, he wore the Kanohi Suletu, Mask of Telepathy, which, as mentioned above, allowed him to read other people's minds. He carried a laser crossbow and a multi-shot Zamor sphere launcher. As a Toa Mari, he wears the Kanohi Zath, Mask of Summoning, which, as mentioned above, allows him to summon Rahi to his aid. He originally carried a Kordak blaster and an unidentified Toa tool, which he quickly replaced with a second Kordak blaster out of personal preference. Matoro While a Matoran, Matoro had served as Taraga Nuju's translator and trusted aide, as he could understand Nuju's strange bird calls. When translating for Nuju, he would strike a narrator's pose, with his legs apart, head back and use a deep and booming voice to relay Nuju's wisdom. Unlike most other co-Matoran, Matoro was not asocial, but instead was very friendly towards others. When he became a Toa, Matoro felt that his job as a translator had not prepared him for being a Toa nearly as much as the other Toa Inika, most of whom had backgrounds as athletes or warriors. Despite his fear, he did his best to fulfill his new duties. Constantly burdened with the amount of secrets he was intended to keep, Matoro struggled with being unable to tell his friends, though he ultimately knew that revealing anything would endanger them, something he was not willing to do. His secrecy led some of the other Toa, such as Halley and Jala, to think that Matoro refused to share secrets with them on purpose, even though they were friends. During his time as a Toa, and the experiences in searching for the mask, Matoro slowly began taking charge, filling the role of the leader. Jala, who naturally emerged as the leader, felt conflicted about Matoro's attitude, though the two amicably resolved their differences. Meanwhile, Matoro struggled with his own challenges, the power of his Kanohi Trina appalled him, and he tried to avoid using it where possible. The mask was in fact bestowed upon him by the Ignika to test his character. Matoro also discovered Makuta Teridax had not merely survived his supposed death, but possessed a robotic prison guard called Maxilos. In this form, the tyrant coerced Matoro into cooperating with his plans, threatening to kill the other Toa Mari if he did not. As a Toa Inika, Matoro wore the Kanohi Iden, Mask of Spirit, which allowed his spirit to physically leave his body. He carried an energized ice sword and a multi-shot Zamor sphere launcher as his Toa tools. As a Toa Mari, he wore the Kanohi Trina, Mask of Reanimation, which allowed him to give life to and control dead beings. He carried a twin cutter and a Kordak blaster, transformed from his previous weapons. As a destined bearer and user of the Kanohi Ignika, Matoro was not cursed by the mask, and was also one of the only ones that could access its power. He ended up sacrificing his life so that Mata Nui could be resurrected and that his teammates could breathe air again he teleported them back to Metru Nui. <laughs> Other Toa teams Toa Kordak, the first ever Toa team led by Toa Lesevic, including Toa Nikula, a Toa of Fire, a Toa of Water, a Toa of Sonics, a Toa of Iron, a Toa of Stone, and a Toa of Gravity. All members of the team, except for Lesevic, were killed in a battle against a tribe of Zyglak, due to a fatal hesitation on Lesevic's part. He is now fully committed to find a way to make it up to his teammates. Toa Mangai, Toa Lakan's team of eleven, formed to defend Metru Nui against the Kanohi Dragon. 
Most remained after the Rahi had been defeated and guarded the city throughout the Dark Hunters' invasion. Known members include Midiki, voiced by Paul Dobson, Tuyet, Naho, Four Toa of Ice, A Toa of Stone, A Toa of Earth, and A Toa of Plant Life. All members were killed, except Nidiki, who turned traitor by joining the Dark Hunters and was mutated into an arthropod-like Dark Hunter, and Lacan, voiced by Michael Dobson, who became a Taraga after summoning the Toa Metru. All are deceased with the exception of Tuyet, who was recently revealed to be alive in the official web serial, Reign of Shadows. Jovan's team, known members included a Toa who died using the Ignica, another who wore an Elder to help track the Ignica, and one who wore a Kanohi Olmec to help his team escape the energy storms all later killed by the Makuta. Jovan later became the Taraga of Voya Nui, but died when part of the island that later became Mari Nui broke off. Toa Metru, Hordika, Varkama's team of six, whose duty was to rescue and protect the Matoran from Makuta Teridaks. It included Nokama Toa of Water, voiced by Tabitha Saint Germain, Varkama Toa of Fire, voiced by Alessandro Giuliani, Mato Toa of Air, voiced by Brian Drummond, Fenua Toa of Earth, voiced by Paul Dobson, Nuju Toa of Ice, voiced by Trevor Devall, and Onewa Toa of Stone, voiced by Brian Drummond. Having achieved their destiny, they became the Taraga of Mata Nui, and led the defense of the Matoran in the Dark Time, when Makuta used Rahi to attack their villages. After briefly serving with Doom as Taraga of Metru Nui, they were imprisoned by Akmu when Makuta Teridax took control of the Matoran universe. When the Great Spirit Mata Nui killed Teridax, the Taraga were part of the migration onto the reformed Spherus Magna. Individual Toa Takanova Takanova was originally an AV Matoran named Takua, who was hidden on Metru Nui during the time slip to ensure that a Toa of Light would one day come into being to counter the Makuta. At some point his mask was damaged, and was replaced with a Kanohi Pakari that never fit properly, and turned blue due to his lack of control over his disguise as a TA Matoran. He was known in Metru Nui for his tendency to wander off and not fulfill his duties. Matoran joked that a squad of Vaki were assigned to keep an eye on him. Takua continued to show this lack of interest in his work after being brought to Mata Nui, and was eventually banished by Taraga Vakama during the Dark Time. Takua began wandering across the island, and undertook errands to aid the Taraga of all the villages. On the way, he discovered the Toa stones hidden by the Toa Metru 1000 years before, and with the Taraga's blessing, assembled them at the Kini Nui in the middle of the island. Together, the stones activated the beacon that finally summoned the Toa Mata to Mata Nui, although the blast threw him to the beach of Tawahi and left him with amnesia. Once again he set off across the island on missions for the Taraga, who named him Chronicler for his heroics. Finally, the Taraga gave him an important task, assemble a small group of Matoran to guard the Kini Nui temple from Rahi attack, while the Toa confronted Makuta below. At the Taraga's request, Takua chose Matoran from each village who were either the most skilled in their crafts or loners like himself. Takua's Matoran, who named themselves the Chronicler's Company, waged a noble defense of the Kini Nui, while Takua had visions of the struggle underground through a mental link with Toa Gali. As the battle seemed impossible, reinforcements from the other villages appeared to turn the tide. Takua then journeyed to the great mine of Onu Koro at Fenua's behest, where he discovered another path to Makuta's lair. Thus, Takua witnessed the Toa's battle with the Makuta, and the awakening of the Borok. Using an ancient portal, Takua barely escaped with his life. Now accepted by the Matoran, Takua documented the war with the Borok, and journeyed with Nuparu to assist the villagers most at risk. Following the defeat of the Borok Kal, Takua discovered the Kanohi Avaki, Mask of Light, and once again set off across the island, this time accompanied by his best friend Jala, in the hope they could locate the seventh Toa. They were chased for much of their journey by the Rakshi, culminating in a final stand at the Kini Nui with the Toa Nuva. Jala was killed in the attack, prompting Takua to realize he was in fact the seventh Toa. He donned the Avaki and became the first Toa of Light. After renaming himself Takanova, meaning Takua Nuva, as he considered himself a Toa Nuva, although he was not, he fought and temporarily defeated Makuta Teridax, allowing the Matoran to return to Metru Nui after 1,000 years. Takanova would guard Metru Nui in the Toa Nuva's absence, and fought Frostalus to defend the city. He later intercepted a dark presence in his mind and went after the culprit, the Dark Hunter codenamed Dweller. As he did, Makuta Ikarax dropped a shadow leech upon him, meant to bite Akmu and become a shadow Toa, but was able to incinerate the leech with concentrated light, and fell unconscious from the light drain. 
His gold-colored armor turned to a shining iron-gray color, to symbolize the powers of light and shadow now surging through his right and left hands. He then met with Helrix, Krakua, and Brutaka, who showed him the origins of the Toa Nuva through a set of visions, before sending him to Kata Nui. Brutaka opened the portal, but due to the damaged state of his Kanohi Olmec, led to several dimensional journeys, one resulting in him receiving a powdered Makuta virus from a heroic Kricker, giving him the power of flight, before arriving in Kata Nui. There, he found the Toa Nuva in the swamps. Takanuva grew to a height of 10 feet as a result of arriving in an area with such strong light. Takanuva saw the Makuta Kricker near Toa Gali Nuva, not knowing that Kricker was trying to help her. He provided the Toa Nuva with vital information and fought against the Makuta. He witnessed Kricker's death, having his density completely eradicated into microscopic particles, because he tried to warn them all of Teridax's betrayal. Enraged by this, he fought ferociously against the remaining Makuta. Vikan, a mutated Le Matoran, a shadow Matoran just minutes before, sought out Takanuva, and told him of the clack. The clack had the power to screech and shatter the barrier that prevented light from returning to shadow beings. He then restored all Shadow Matoran to AV Matoran, and lastly himself, turning him gold again. Takanuva then took the Matoran still mutated into bat-like creatures to another location. He assisted the Toa Nuva in awaking Mata Nui, and left for Metru Nui. He, along with the other Toa have formed a revolt against Teridax when he took over the universe. When the Makuta landed on Bara Magna, Takanuva exited the giant robot onto the new planet, altering his colors in the process to not draw attention to himself. He assisted Tahu in retrieving the golden armor, killing two heat vision Rakshi in the process. He has since returned his armor to gold and white. Krakua Krakua is a Toa of Sonics working for the Order of Martin Nui. Like all de Matoran, Krakua had very acute hearing. However, despite this, he had a habit of humming to himself, which caused many of his fellow de Matoran to avoid him. As a Toa of Sonics, Krakua is able to create, control and absorb sound. This allows him to create sound waves or concentrated beams of sound, use sonic waves to disrupt a structure's integrity, and absorb all of the sound in an area to create a field of silence. As with other order operatives, his mind is shielded from mental assaults. He carries a sonic vibration sword and wears a suletu, which is shaped like a great how. Krakua is currently the only Toa of Sonic still alive. <laughs> Helrix Helrix was the first Toa ever to be created and is the leader of the Order of Mata Nui. Despite being a Toa of Water, Helrix is extremely fierce, somewhat impatient, and quick to anger. She always strives to achieve her vision of the greater good, no matter the decisions and choices she has to make to get it. She carries a spiked mace and a shield for melee combat and wears the Kanohi Mask of Psychometry, which allows her to see into a being's past just by touching him. Her mind is also shielded from outside mental presences, as is mandatory with order training. Due to the nature of her role in the order, Helrix excluded herself from the Toa Code, which stipulates that Toa cannot kill their opponents. Lesevik Lesevik is a guilt-ridden Toa of Air and the leader of the first Toa team. Due to his hesitation, which led to his team's death, Lesevik blames himself for causing their deaths, and considers himself unworthy to be a Toa. His self-perceived failure to live up to the standards of the Toa exempts him from the code, and he is willing to kill his opponents. Lesevik carries an air sword and a Kordak blaster as his main Toa tools. He wears a faxon as his Kanohi mask. After Lesevik arrived on Spheris Magna, he was suspected with killing Karzani, as his sword was found near his body, but a message in the stars caused Kopaka to suspect otherwise. <laughs> Powers and abilities All Toa have elemental powers, which they can use to manipulate existing elements or create new substance, as well as physical traits they possessed as Matoran. These elemental powers recharge naturally over time, the amount the energy exerted will determine how long it takes to return to full strength. They also have the mental discipline to use great and noble Kanohi masks only the Toa Nuva can use Kanohi Nuva. An ability all Toa share is the ability to perform Nova Blasts in which they release all their elemental energies at once. 
This has only ever been seen once in the story, when Gali of the Toa Nuva leveled the realm of Karzani with a wall of water in a last ditch attempt to defeat Makuta Ikarax. It took all her concentration to save the other Toa from drowning. Jala planned to unleash a Nova Blast in the pit to buy Matoro time from the armies of the Baraki, and would almost certainly have killed everyone in the immediate area by doing so. Six Toa can combine their elemental powers to create a Protodermis seal. Any six Toa can do this as long as two of the Toa are not light and shadow, as the two are cancelled out. This ability has only been seen being done by teams consisting of a fire, ice, water, air, stone, and earth. Toa are also able to use their Toa power to heal certain things and create Toa stones, which contain some of their own Toa power. When a Toa has united with others, completed his or her duty, and achieved his or her destiny, he or she can sacrifice all of his or her Toa power, and he or she becomes a Taraga. They can also choose to give up their Toa power before their destiny is complete, and will become Taraga upon fulfilling that destiny. Controversy In 2001, LEGO faced legal action by Maori activists from New Zealand for trademarking Maori words used in naming the Bionicle product range for use in the Matoran language, including the names of some Toa, and even the word Toa itself. Despite this, many of the names of the Toa from Maori language were still kept, though LEGO was careful in naming characters from then on. In the 2015 relaunch, the new versions of the original six Toa are called Master and Uniters on their packaging, but still referred to as Toa in Universe. 